Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, we are in session number four. Uh, we are almost done with uh, the first week. Um, and we are going to have three more weeks to complete the whole module. So we are going to end this um, session with the topic that we were developing yesterday. That is a model verb. We are going to continue with the information that we have. Then I will write some information about health issues uh, in which we are going to create a vocabulary about that topic. But it's like, um, I will write the information in the document that you are going to um, have in your, um, in your devices. You have the link, access to the documents, uh, so I will write the information about that topic and you're going to see all the information there uh, when you access to the document. Um, I want to say something uh, that is not about the topic that we are going to develop uh, right now. Um, do you have the access to the platform? So you need to work uh, on the exercise that you have there. Uh, so if you are not working on the platform, you need to go there and complete the exercises. Si no han entrado a la plataforma, si no están trabajando en la plataforma, eh, háganlo. Tienen que completar la sección, ¿verdad? Acuérdense que hoy terminamos la semana 1 y el tiempo va súper rápido. Así que cuando tengan tiempo de poder trabajar en la plataforma, por favor, háganlo. No necesitan ir una actividad, una actividad. Ustedes pueden hacer todas las actividades que ustedes quieran eh, para ir avanzando. Acuérdense que parte de su trabajo es completar las actividades de la plataforma y así poder generarles, ¿verdad? Su diploma al final de cada módulo. Así que solo como recordatorio, cuando tengan tiempo, trabajen lo más que puedan en las actividades para que al final no eh, vayan a estar corriendo con las actividades. Pueden hacer todas las actividades que quieran y avanzar de esa forma, ¿verdad? So, after that, we are going to um, begin with the explanation of the topic that we have. And yesterday we were talking about model verbs and we were saying that we have some types of words that we are going to use in this uh, topic. Let me put the list here. So I will share the screen because we need to continue with that topic. So here we are in the document in which we have the information that we were developing yesterday. So in this case, we were saying that we have this word that's a function or express uh, a specific idea. In this case, we were saying that this kind of word express ability, possibility, permission, or obligation. And we have a can and could, be able to, may, might, shall, should, must, have to and will and will. We have the information for can, go, and be able to. We were doing some exercises yesterday uh, using the structures that we were uh, learning yesterday. Now, we are going with number two, that is the second type of model verbs that we have. And we are going to see may and might. That is the second part of this um, information. So, may and might. 
This one is used for formal permissions. Also for formal prohibition. We can use may or may not plus a base form of the verb. And we have the example. Remember that we are using just structures to explain this topic. So we have example number one, and it says, you may start your exam now. So in this case, we have the structure may start. That is the structure that we are using for this part of the topic. Number two, you may not wear sandals to work. So here we have the negative and the verb. Then we have polite request. Then we have the structure may plus subject plus base form of the verb. And we have the example. And it says, may I help you? This is a very a common question that we can use to offer help to someone. May I help you? Then we are talking about possibility. And negative possibility. We have this structure and it says may or might plus base form of the verb. And we have some examples. We have example number one and it says, we may, uh, we may go out for a dinner tonight we may go out for dinner tonight. Do you want to join us? And we have a second example. Our company might get the order if the client agrees to the price. Algo que tenemos que notar en estas eh, estructuras que estamos utilizando es que son un poco más formales son un poco más respetuosas. En cambio, las que estábamos utilizando, can, cool, and be able to, eran como un poquito más informales. Estas son mucho más formales y son como un poquito más así, que no es eh, tan informal, no nos vamos directamente a la pregunta. Por ejemplo, en donde dice, may I help you? ¿Te puedo ayudar? It's like that kind of... Eh, Sense that we give to the structure or to the question. And also, we may go up, uh, for a dinner tonight. Do you want to join us? Vamos a ir a cenar afuera hoy. ¿Quieres unirte a nosotros? ¿Quieres ir con nosotros? So the take is formal or polite request. So in this case, we can say that 
they are very, very formal. Then we have a negative. And it says, may not or my not. Plus base form of the verb. And we have the example. One, it says, Adam and Sue may not buy. that house it's very expensive and the second one they might not buy a house at all Then we have this one that is for making suggestions. So to make a suggestion, when there is no better alternative. So in this case, we are going to use this structure when we don't have a uh, better uh, alternative, and we need to take an option. So in the case is when we don't have anything else. And it says may as well, might as well. There is a structure, may as well, or might as well, plus the base form of the verb. And we have the example. Number one, it says, you may as well come inside, then we'll be home soon. So in this case, if when we don't have another chance or another option um, to do something. So in that case, is when we have like no option to do something like in the first one you may as well come inside john will be home soon eh, podríamos decirlo tú también puedes entrar o tú puedes estar dentro de la casa o puedes entrar a la casa john va a estar aquí dentro de poco no tenemos otra opción porque necesitamos hablar con john maybe and in that case we need to wait inside the house
Okay, then we have polite suggestion. And we are following the same structure because we are saying that uh, we are using this kind of structures to make polite suggestions to, to use this, um, this structure for something very formal or to sound more polite. Vamos a utilizarla siempre para sonar de manera más respetuosa, más formal, más así, ¿verdad? No tan informal, no tan como que ya nos conocemos y tenemos tanta confianza. So, in this case, we have this structure. My plus base form of the verb. And we have the example. And it says, do you mind like to try the salmon is our special today. So in these cases, when you are in a restaurant and the uh, waiter is, um, it's uh, giving you some suggestions. So in that case, they uh, need to sound uh, very polite. It's not like they are telling you to do something. If they are like to uh, tell you that there are some uh, special options that you can uh, have. In this case, it's talking about um, a specific food. You might like to try the salmon fillet. It's our special today. Te gustaría probar o te gustaría tener el filete de salmón. Es nuestro especial de hoy. So in the case, it's like we are going to sound very polite. So we are going to have the exercises. And we have five sentences, and we are uh, going to use might or may. But in this case, we are going to use might not, that is negative, might, may, may as well, or may not. We have those options to complete the sentence. We have exercise number one, and it says they finish. The project on time. So, I mean, this time, okay. The main engineer is ill. So, in this case, is a negative connotation. Number two, you want to stop by the museum on their way out. Number three, this is our question. I have the number four, you, I mean, he, 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 this is No breath He's in Paris anyway.
And the number five, that is the last one. You park your car. It's the reserve for guests of the hotel only. So we are five sentences in which we are going to use may, might, may not, might not, and may as well. So you can read the sentence and uh, remember that for a formal permission, when we are asking for permission or prohibition, we are going to use may. For polite request, we use may plus the subject. In this case, it's a question. For a possibility or a negative, a negative a possibility, we use both may or might plus the base form of the verb. Also, we can use may not, might not when it is something negative. To make a suggestion when there is no better alternative, we use may as well or might as well. For my suggestion, my plus base form. So you can read the sentences, you can uh, think uh, about the answer that you can uh, give to this sentence. And in a minute or two, I will ask you for the answers. Oh, no, don't worry. Um, I'm just in silence because you are solving uh, the sentences. But it's time to um, write the uh, answers. So for the first one, they finish the project on time. The main engineer is ill. In this sentence is uh, a negative connotation. What is the answer that you can give to this sentence? ¿Cuál podría ser they, la respuesta? Dígame. They make not. Mm, okay. We can use both, right? We can use may and we can use might, but that is okay. They might not, or if you can use, they might not. Finish the project on time. And ellos no van a poder terminar el proyecto a tiempo. ¿Por qué? Porque el ingeniero está enfermo. 
Good. Second one, you want to stop by the museum gift shop on your way out. ¿Cuál podemos utilizar en el número dos? Might. Oh, good, might. You might want to stop at the museum gift shop on your way out. Number three, I have your autograph. In this case, it's a question. How can we use for questions? May. May. Good, may. May I have? Number four, he visited the Louvre. He is in Paris anyway. In this case, it's when we don't have another option, but it's pretty easy. Cuando no tenemos ninguna otra opción, tell me. May, may as well. Good, may as well. Perfect. Es como queriendo decir, tiene que visitar ese lugar porque de todos modos ya está en París. So in that case, if, uh, that person doesn't have uh, another option. He is in the place where he needs to do that thing. Then, number five, that is the last one. You? You, you may not. Ah, that's good. You may not or may not. You may not or may not. Perfect. You may not park your car here. It's reserved for guests of the hotel only. Good. Thank you for your participation. Okay, we have uh, more words that we can use for this um, for this topic that we are using, and it's the uh, model words. We are going to learn one more type of word, and then we are going to see the other topic. Uh, we are going to construct a vocabulary. Vamos a ver solo un grupo más de palabras porque ya vimos que son cinco. Voy a incluir la información de los otros dos que nos van a quedar eh, en el documento para que ustedes lo vayan revisando despacio. Y vamos a ver el siguiente tipo de palabras. That is, shall, should, out, to. No vamos a hacer ejercicios en esa porque simplemente vamos a ver la información. And then we are going to develop the second topic. Vamos a ver el segundo eh, tema de hoy. That is, um, health issues. Vamos a construir vocabulario con palabras que tengan que ver con salud. So, we are going to continue with the third part. That is, show, show out to. Show, show how to. And it says that this one is used to offer of assistance or polite suggestion when you are quite sure of a positive answer. In that case, it's when we are searching for a positive answer. In that case, when we, need, uh, when we know that someone is going to say something negative, we are not going to use this structure because we are searching just for positive uh, answers.
with our sharp plus subject plus base form of the verb. And we have one example. It says, shall we go for a walk? So in that case, when we're using in this kind of a structure, it's like saying, vamos a dar un paseo, podemos ir a dar un paseo. So in that case, is maybe in that case, we are going to have a positive um, answer. Siempre que necesitemos eh, respuestas positivas o que estemos seguros que nos van a dar respuestas positivas, vamos a utilizar estas estructuras. Si le preguntamos a alguien, vamos de paseo, Podemos llegar a, a pensar que esta persona pues, quiere ir de paseo y nos va a decir que sí. So, in that case, we are going to use the structure. Shall is only used with I or we. Solo lo vamos a utilizar con I. The pronoun I, el pronombre yo, and we. Yo, nosotros. With those uh, pronouns, we are going to use shall. Sorry, Miss, uh, repeat yes. again, please. Tell me. Uh, can you repeat again, please, ah. about shall? Shall is only used with I and we. Solo lo vamos a utilizar con I y con we. Con esos dos pronombres vamos a utilizar shall. With I and we, like Thanks. this. You're welcome. So in this case, it's saying that we are going to use show with I and we, and it is used instead of we, only in formal English. Quiere decir que vamos a utilizar shall en lugar de will cuando estamos utilizando inglés formal. Cuando es 100% formal, vamos a utilizar show en lugar de will. To offer assistance or polite suggestion when you are not sure of a positive answer. In this case, we are going to use should. Esto es lo contrario, ¿verdad? Para ofrecer asistencia y eh, sugerencias cuando no estamos seguros de una respuesta positiva, vamos a utilizar Should, en este caso no vamos a utilizar shall, porque aquella es para positiva, should es para negativas o respuestas negativas. We have the structure show plus subject plus base form of the verb.
And we have the example. Should I call a doctor? So we have this question. Should I call a doctor? Es como, vamos a llamar a un doctor, puedo llamar a un doctor, voy a llamar a un doctor. In that case, uh, it's very common that the people say, no, that's okay, I'm fine. It's not necessary to call a doctor. And in that case, we are using a should because we expect, are expecting a negative answer because many people do not like uh, doctors or something like that. But if we are searching for a positive answer, we can say, shall I call a doctor? So it's going to be different. Si queremos una eh, respuesta positiva, estamos seguros de una respuesta positiva, shall I call a doctor? Pero en este caso, como es una respuesta negativa, shall I call a doctor? Porque casi siempre vamos a obtener una respuesta negativa donde nos digan, ¿sabes qué? No quiero que llames al doctor, ya me siento bien. And then we have this one to give advice. And in this case, where we can use should or we can use how to. And we have this sample. You should check that document before you send it out. So this case is like saying, deberías de ver el documento, revisar el documento antes de enviarlo. It's like a, an advice to do something. And then uh, number two, it says, you ought to have your car um, service before winter. So in that case, it's like saying, deberías de tener tu carro ya revisado y todo arreglado antes de el invierno. So, we are going to end the part of the, uh, the model verb here, and we are going to have uh, two more uh, groups in the document. If you are having trouble to enter the document, you can tell me. Or if you don't have the link, uh, you can ask for the link on, or tell me, I don't have the link. Can you send again the link? And I will send the link again. When you uh, want to read some information, you just need to enter the link and you will have all the information. It is not necessary that you don't learn anything. Siempre que se actualice el documento, ustedes van a tener la información ahí. No es que solo le va a aparecer la de una o dos clases, sino que le va a aparecer toda la información, ya que es un documento de Google, en, en el cual, pues obviamente, si ustedes tienen acceso, van a ver toda la información que está ahí. Es no, no es como en el documento Word, que es irlo enviando todas las semanas. Aquí ustedes van a tener toda la información y yo le puedo agregar información extra de estos temas. So, we are going to change the topic, and uh, we are going to talk about vocabulary. Vamos a hablar de un vocabulario. We are going to talk about health, health issues, and we are going to construct some information about health. So, let me take this to another page.
So in that case, we are going to uh, see some some vocabulary, some question that we can ask to someone that is having troubles or that you see that they are having a bad moment. We are going to uh, write some uh, phrases that we can use when we are talking about health. And also we are going to see some vocabulary, some words uh, that are talking about health. Lo primero que vamos a hacer es eh, preguntas que le podemos hacer a las personas cuando nosotros vemos que no se están sintiendo bien o cuando queremos saber cómo se sienten. So, we are going to say, the most common ways to ask about someone's health are, and we have three questions. And we have here our question that we can ask when you want to know uh, about the health of someone. So let me see. Here, okay. We have the first one. How do you feel today? How do you feel today? Como te sientes hoy? Or just how do you feel? Como te sientes? In general, how do you feel? Or how do you feel today? Next one, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? Como te estás sintiendo? Because in that case, we have ing, that is the gerund. Y en español, el gerundio yendo ando. Como te estás sintiendo? Number three, is everything okay? Is everything okay? Está todo bien? And we have some um, common answers that we can give when someone is asking us something like this. Vamos a seguir también las respuestas más comunes cuando alguien nos hace este tipo de preguntas. And we have, I'm fine. That is the most common. I'm fine. I feel sick. I feel sick. Me siento enfermo o enferma. Not so good. Not so good. No muy bien. Not very well. No muy bien, we can say. I don't feel well. No me siento nada bien. Remember that uh, in some cases we have a um, sentence that can have the same or a something very, um, we can say that it's almost the same. Tenemos muchas oraciones que se pueden parecer mucho en la traducción, pero que eh, se utilizan de varias formas. Y que tiene su variable, ¿verdad? And the last one, I am sick. I'm sick. Estoy enfermo. We know that there are many answers that we can give depending on the person that is eh, speaking. Maybe you can say, oh, I'm okay, I'm feeling good, and I don't have anything, and something like that. Or you can uh, specify what are you feeling. Oh, I think I am, I have fever, I have a uh, headache, or uh, a sore throat, or something like that. We can uh, create our own uh, answers for that question. And also we can create some questions to ask if someone is okay. So these ones are just examples of questions 
n m answers. When you see or hear that they are not well, then you can ask. What's the matter? What's the matter? Or we can ask, what's wrong? Cuando vemos, escuchamos que alguien no está bien, le podemos preguntar, ¿cuál es el problema? What's the matter? O, oh, what's wrong? ¿Qué, es el, ¿Qué se pasa? ¿Qué es lo malo? ¿Qué, qué está sucediendo? If the person eh, wants to say what is wrong, they may give the reason they feel that way. Si decimos que hay algo malo sucediendo, tenemos que dar una razón de por qué está sucediendo eso o la razón de por qué nos sentimos así. So we have some examples in which you can express what is wrong. I have, then we can ask a health condition. I've got, and again, health condition. Then we can say, I have a headache. Then I, I've got a sore throat. So we can construct Question and answer. We are going to have some examples of the question and we are going to have a structure of how to construct the answers. So, for example, we have, how are you? We have two possible answers. I feel fine. This one is something positive. Or we can say, I feel sick. That is negative. How are you today? And we can say, I feel good. That is again positive, or we can say, I feel awful, that is something negative. No, in that case, it's not negative, the first one. En la segunda, no, es, no son negativas las dos. I feel good es eh, positiva. I feel awful es negative. In that case, we have both, positive and negative. 
Ben, how do you feel? And we have the first one, I feel great. Positive. And then we have, I feel terrible. And this one is negative. And the last one, how do you feel today? We have, I feel fantastic. That is positive. And also, I feel miserable. That is negative. So we can construct like a conversation when someone is asking, Hey, how do you feel? And we can say, not so good. What's the matter? I have a headache. I'm so sorry to hear that. So in this case, we can add some details. Because in this case, if when um, something is wrong, and we are saying that something is wrong, we need to add some details. Why are we feeling like that? Like in the conversation, how do you feel? And in that case, if something bad that is happening, that is not so good. And the question, what's the matter? And you need to say, what is the problem? I have a headache. And we can say, I'm too sorry to hear that. So we are going to have a list of words that we can use for this topic. And it says it's a list of common health problems uh, with the definition of each word of expression. We are going to write the definition for the word, and then we are going to see the uh, Spanish translation. But we are going to see some of them because we have just five minutes to end the session. Solo tenemos cinco minutos, así que vamos a ir escribiendo la lista y luego vamos a ir dándole la traducción al español. So, we are going to create the list. List of health problems. We have an allergy. And it says that an allergy is a medical condition that causes you to react badly or feel sick when you eat or touch a particular substance. An allergy, una alergia, que es una condición médica que causa que reaccionemos muy mal o nos sintamos enfermos cuando comemos o tocamos una sustancia en particular. Then, Asthma. It says that it's a respiratory condition where a stand in the lungs causes difficulty in breathing and asthmatic uses as in order to calm the stand. Asthma is lo que nosotros conocemos en español como asthma, que es una condición respiratoria donde hay unos espasmos en los pulmones que dificultan el proceso de respiración. Then we have backache, backache, but it's a prolonged pain in the back. Es un dolor en la espalda, es un dolor prolongado, ¿verdad? En la zona de la espalda. A broken leg. A broken leg when a bone in the leg is broken. A broken leg is put in a cast to help and mobilize the leg so that it heals quicker. Other parts of the body with bones can also be broken. For example, a broken arm, a broken wrist. Tenemos una pierna rota. But we can have another part of the body with that foundation. 
Then we have cancer. That it says a serious disease caused by an uncontrolled division of abnormal cells that heal normal body cells in a part of the body. Eh, esto es cáncer, que es una enfermedad bastante, o oh, sí, es una enfermedad bastante seria, que, causa, eh, que es causada por una condición o una división incontrolada o oh, anormal de las células. Then we have a cold. Cold. And it says it's a common viral infection which causes mucus to run from the nose. Keeps a sore throat and often includes the sneezing. Una gripe, ¿verdad? Una gripe común, um, que es una infección viral común que causa mocos eh, que salen por la nariz, que nos da una garganta irritada, otro, y que en muchos de los casos incluye estornudos. Then we have a cough. A cough is the act of expelling air from the lungs with a sudden sharp sound. <laughs> That sharp sound is una tos que es el acto de sacar, ¿verdad? El aire de los pulmones con un sonido bastante carrasposo. Then we have itch. An ear itch. Pain inside the ear. Un dolor de oído. Fever, that is the last one. A fever is an abnormally high body temperature, usually accompanied by shivering and headaches. Fiebre, ¿verdad? Un, eh, una temperatura alta anormal del cuerpo, usualmente acompañada por escalofríos o por un dolor de cabeza. So, I'm going to write the whole list in the document in which you are going to see when you access to the link. So we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other on Monday. The next week, remember that we are going to work from uh, Monday to Thursday. So in that case, we're not going to write uh, to work in, uh, on Friday. La próxima semana es de lunes a jueves. No vamos a trabajar el día viernes como esta semana. Si no, otra semana ya sería de lunes a jueves. So, have a really good night. Have a really good uh, weekend. And see each other on Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. See you on Monday.